So being in the game as long as you have, you said you've traveled a, 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 around and you've um, been out there battling. Tell me some of the places that you've gone to and like some of the type of MCs that you've, you've gone up against. Um, I, I went back in the day, I, I went up against anybody. I ain't care, like, straight up. I ain't care who you was. If I heard you, if I could be walking down the street, if I hear you rapping, <laughs> I'm gonna stop and give it to you, like real talk. No bullshit, like, I remember uh, this this guy right here, this right here, Gov this right here, my brother right here, you know what I'm saying, rest in peace, love him to death, but like when I was in the street, like slaying cats, <clears throat> first, um, shout out Double O, my, my boy, right. Double O came to me and was like, yo, Red wanna meet you, I'm like, Red who, I was like, Red man, I'm like, yeah, all right. So he was like, yo, I'm going to take you up to the studio. All right, cool. He takes me up to the studio. I meets Red Bread Man is in there. And, you know, a couple of other cats that he did, he was dealing with. A studio called Troposphere. And, um, you know what I'm saying? I was doing my thing or whatever. So, like, two days later, he was about to go on Hot 97. So he was like, yo, listen, I'm going on Hot 97 tomorrow. Him and Meth the Man was about to go on the Red and Meth tour. He was like, yo, I'm about to go on Hot 97, so I'm, this is who I'm taking with me up there. I'm taking bump. You feel me? Like, so he put me in a situation to give me an opportunity to really, you know, to do my, you know, let 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 the masses hear him. You feel me? Mm -hmm. So he took me up on Hot 97. It was me, uh, Devil O, Gov, and uh, my man Ica, Ica the Great. You know what I'm saying? Shout out it. Um, and like we went up there, and it was it was crazy, bro. <laughs> it was on the Funk Flex show, bro. And then after that, like like two weeks later, he came to me and was like, "Yo," and like I had just got cased up, like real talk. I was about to be on the run, cause I wasn't. It was about, I was about to have a trial. So he came to me. He was like, "Yo, I need your ID." I'm like, "What you want my ID for?" He's like, "Cause I let some people on Cali here. You didn't want to sign." You. I'm like, you bullshit. I was like, nah, I ain't bullshit. I gave my ID. It was like, be at my house Wednesday, 11 o'clock. Like, we out. I ran home and shit, told my chick I was living in New Brunswick. That's why I got cased up at it. Had niggas selling weed for, weed for me out there. Niggas set me up to fucking, fucking like, B-O-N. Like, real talk, bro. So, I went and told my chick she was a school teacher. I'm like, yo, Dave, like, I'm about to go to Cali and shit. You know, um, with this music shit. She was like, you know, that's what's up. I'm like, you know, when I get shit, you know, going out there, I'm a simp for you and the shorties. And um, Gov took me to Cali, and I was fucking with Heartless Records. I lived in North Hollywood. And I was going to the studio, like, like it was crazy because when I got there, like, I, I didn't, my, my whole mentality was like, I really didn't come down here to make no friends, bro. You feel me? I came down here to show people that, like, I'm that nigga. Like, fuck that. I was waking the engineer up. Shout out number nine. I'm waking nine up. Six, seven in the morning. We going to the studio. No bullshit. In probably 30 days, I probably had, like, 50 songs done, bro. Plus, I was helping other people do shit. Because I write R&B. I, I sing a little bit. So I was doing my thing. But they ain't want to give me no money. They, they ain't want to give me the money that I wanted. You know, they tried to give me an allowance, a per diem. I'm like, man, you got to be out there. <laughs> like, motherfucker, I was just getting money in the hood. Fuck, you think I'm about to sign a contract for five years? However the fuck long it is, you know what I'm saying, for allowance every week, you talking about you gonna give me $200 a week? You fucking crazy, bro. So that shit didn't work out, you know what I'm saying? And But after that, they gave me a plane ticket to come back to the hood, but like, I cashed the plane ticket in and I stayed in Cali. Cause like I had met I had met some people, you feel me? And I met a I met, I met this white boy, you know what I'm saying? I loved him like he was my brother. Cause that nigga, bro, I met him in the studio. <clears throat> I'm just going fast forward to a week later I was living in Bel Air, man. Straight the fuck up. Mm. Forty million dollar mansion. Riding around Hollywood and limous limousines and shit, bro. Like real talk. I was doing my thing. 
So let me ask you this. What is the shell shock from living that hood life and then mixing with people who are quote unquote upper class? How, how, how was that for you? I mean, it, it, it killed the myth of me saying that, you know, white, that's why I don't, when people, even when I was younger, like white people, the devil, man, get the fuck out of here. You feel me? I don't want to hear that shit, like, you feel me? Because white people really, true and deep, you know what I'm saying? They, they, they fucked us off, you know, the slavery, you know what I'm saying? My grandmother, your grandmother, you feel me? But like, now it's a different time, man. Like, you feel me? Like, real talk. So, we already know what the fuck they'll do, you feel me? But you can't concern yourself with that. You got to do what the fuck you going to do. Protect your family, grind, get your money. Fuck what they going to do. Like real talk. Because you already know what they going to do if they get the chance to, man. So you got to like, you got to learn how to weed through that shit, man. Go get your own fucking bread, man. Do your own thing, man. Like, like that's it. And, and it's, and like, it's crazy because I'm still in, like, I'm still in the street, my nigga. You feel me? Motherfuckers kill me talking about, oh, this nigga old here, he trying to rap. Nigga, the fuck out of here, nigga. I've been rapping, nigga. Feel me? And I don't give a fuck how old I get. You still can't fuck with me, nigga. Straight up. Bars, I will smash your ass. Straight up. So, and then on top of that, me still, you know, doing music and rapping and can fuck with any style and all of that shit. I still got bills, man. Fuck out of here. You feel me? I still got to keep a roof over my head. I still got to feed myself. You know what I'm saying? I got kids, man. I got a little daughter. My little daughter be two years old in September. So get the fuck out of here. You feel me? And just like I said, I'm still in the hood, man. <clears throat> like, look, man. Like, I'm still in the hood, man. You feel me? Like, this shit ain't, like... I don't give a fuck if I'm 62, man. Like, I'm still gonna be in the hood. Like, cause even even if I get to become a millionaire, I will never leave North, man. Like, real talk. I'm uh, like, I'ma stay right in North and do what I always did. Help motherfuckers, try to put motherfuckers on, man. Like, Christmas every year, like, I be on Broad and Mark and giving out gifts to all, every kid come by, man. Like, real talk. They did a story on me about that. But like I'm, I always want to see my hood, man, my nigga. All, all the time, man. So like I'm still in the street, like and, and just like I said, I'm 53, about to be 54, and I love this rap shit, and I'm still gonna be shitting, like real, real talk.